All right, back again uh, with part three. Now getting into some of the gameplay for next war and run. And uh, I'm going to, this may be a slightly longer video than the other two, but we'll kind of get on with it. So obviously in turn one, we put, we've got some detections going on, various, uh, various uh, units. And then the next thing, one of the next things that happens uh, as the, uh, as the gameplay evolves is we go through the air superiority phase, which is pretty important. And you can see the Russians really, uh, the Russians, the Chinese went all in with the Iranians. Uh, they actually had superiority, I believe, or uh, some level of advantage in the first turn. Uh, I responded in kind, uh, doubling up on some of their units to, uh, oh, actually, no, it didn't, they're not doubled up over here, uh, but on the left-hand side of the screen. But nevertheless, we, uh, we went for it, uh, <laughs> attempting to secure air superiority as quickly as possible. It's a huge item for me to try and uh, win air superiority if it's viable to do. And the second thing that I like to do is to degrade the detection capability of the enemy and then the SAM tracks as well, either using cruise missiles, which I did in the opening uh, turn and or uh, providing a, and or, uh, Yes, degrading degrading those forces with uh, special forces, uh, those those tracks with special forces. So we can see at the end that I did okay. We didn't get the five, massive five to one advantage I was looking for, but we managed to knock out a few premium PRC units, abort many, many, many of them, and still have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Uh, 12 to 2467. So all just sh shy of two to one. So not enough to really make life exciting for me. Uh, moved all of our naval forces into the Indian Ocean to start with, uh, with the overcast weather. We were just being cautious there. Uh, we, one of the, one of the nasty tricks that can occur here and it becomes a little bit of a, a headquarter hunting game for the Iranians because that's a lot of what will impact the US ability to be effective uh, is head, headquarter hunting, hunting, hunting. So they put uh, soft forces on uh, targeting these uh, HQs for the 82nd Airborne, very annoying. Uh, I ran some initial uh, airfield degradation efforts probably a wasted effort on my part given it was in rough terrain and we had overcast which was going to add a plus two i think to the die roll or, or thereabouts uh would have been better served focusing on other things to bomb the snot out of here we can see me uh attempting to de de uh, degrade the detection and sam uh tracks with the wild weasel effort uh, that was particularly successful in the first turn, I think. Hopefully, I've got another picture here that we can see. Nope. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll check in on that in a minute. And then we have... Uh, so here you can see, look, I've got a, a strike two on these guys. Uh, they destroyed the Saudi Arabian airfields. We had uh, air, air landing. It looks like I, I, I had uh, the Saudis provide... The Saudis provided, pardon the chickens, Saudis provided uh, both airfield uh, access and all, like, then allowed me to do transportation with the, with the troops. And that's the UAE box at the top there of the screen. But you can see that these, these guys just pounded the HQs, destroyed one of my uh, airfields, and uh, then came in and struck again with their air and killed the 82nd Airborne HQ right off the bat. Here you can see the locations of the forces in uh, the, the Persian Gulf for the PRC and sorry, for the uh, Iranians. And it was at this point that I decided that uh, the, the rate of which the, the, uh, oh, so before we get into that. So more importantly, uh, I moved my CDNs and the SAG into the Gulf of Oman we secured uh, control of both the inshore and uh, the Gulf per se. Straight off the bat and uh, the Persian Gulf greater area, but not the inshore uh, area. Uh, very difficult to do while that patrol boat level is at one and the uh, the islands are controlled by, by the bad guys. Oh, there's a shot of some whiskey. 
that uh, we saw in a store that I thought uh, looked fascinating. I'm a big fan of port finished whiskies. Sorry, I thought I took all the social photographs out, so it could be entertaining here. Uh, let's see. So now uh, I all you know my forces are area detected and point detected. So he launched uh, massive strikes against uh, my CVs, and I was very very fortunate that the C West uh, close in uh, uh, weapon support systems deflected all of the missile hits i believe i may have taken a strike one on one of those units uh and i could then why that happened is because he had six of these uh ssms right around here right and i had only destroyed i think maybe one of them and so you've got to clear the area otherwise you are going to get just hammered uh by by these uh by these ssms and here you can see again uh, more devastating attacks on uh, the Saudi and UAE holding boxes. That's right; it was the Omanis that uh, didn't want to play nice with us, and uh, that uh, that continued. And then we get to let's see. This is the top of turn two now. Uh, I've detected this uh, missile site here because uh, you've not you've not only got a roll to find them, you've then got a uh, next turn. You can then attempt or Follow later on in the turn, you can attempt to detect them, and then you can start hitting them with cruise with cruise missiles and ballistic missiles and stuff uh, stuff like that, uh, or air, or airstrikes indeed. Excuse me. All right. So by the end of turn two, by the beginning of turn two, the VP differential has dropped down to the mid twenties now. Uh, so I, I've I've clawed back a little bit, haven't lost too much, but we're we are still in a very significant uh, deficit. And here you can see uh, the air advantage on the bottom of the screen, the current air superiority is that advantage. Uh, that is advantage to me, I believe, uh, not to him. I uh, I tried hitting that HQ there, uh, all those forces there, I, I, that was not effective. Uh, yeah, destroyed this airfield. Uh, no, destroyed this uh, facilities these facilities and it was this was the point where that's a bandar abbas uh cut out box uh it was at this point that i realized that knocking out the facilities was in the best interest of the us even though to me geopolitically and strategically we probably would want to capture them intact right uh, given that the whole premise of the war is to reopen the straits and allow the flow of oil you know probably both for iran and for everybody else although i'm sure there would be some sort of embargo or whatever the case might be but uh it seemed uh, irresponsible for the us to want to destroy oil facilities given the investments that go into them number one number two pollution and all that sort of you know good green nonsense uh, but we would uh, we would probably geopolitically not want to do that. But as the current rules stood, it made sense for us to demolish those. And so we uh, went on a mission to do that. I, uh, in my eagerness, I uh, then decided that since I'd moved a couple of CVs and a SAG into the Oman uh, onshore, inshore area, that the amphibs would come next. See how the uh, the patrol boat track is still at one tisk tisk right so I, I need needed to have paid attention to that and brought that down to zero because it's uh, going to uh, it's going to cause me problems and you can see the point to text uh, excuse me you can see the point to text here on uh, on my forces as they're as they're in the in the zone there all right uh, we uh, uh, we're doing the second turn air superiority And we're now striking heavily against all of the other airfields and ports in the area. See, I'm about to demolish uh, the next Banda Abbas uh, site to limit. That's a, a repeat. Yeah, so here's cruise missiles coming in, knocking those out. I think I may have been targeting the HQ there, probably. I'm not sure why I was trying to do that. Probably not a smart move, not a good use of technology. And here we are targeting. Uh, with missiles, the, the cruise missiles. Sorry, the SSM. Uh, and here we go. See, I finally got smart. I brought in my uh, my uh, F-16s to eliminate those pesky patrol boat uh, sorties that were occurring. 
is a precursor to me getting excited about uh, invading these islands. Oh, yes. Uh, then he moved the airborne, uh, the 127th uh, PRC airborne into Jaski here, and I took the opportunity to pound the dickens out of that because I need this port as a as a supply head for my forces so that we can not be out of supply later on in the game. And there's two shots of that for some reason. Uh, then I decided, you know, hey, look, I can bring the 82nd Airborne in without an HQ because who needs air coverage, right? Who needs all that detection and SAM protection? Oh, my goodness, what a genius. This That won't end well. Both amphibious forces enter the, enter the close-in uh, map here. It's on for young and old. We're, we're in combat there, and I, I take this island back. I send the 101st Airborne HQ in just so that I do have some air coverage, uh, some detection capability, and you'll see in the following turns that these guys are all knocked out. Every single HQ, in, uh, including rebuilds, was uh, swiftly eliminated by, by the Iranians uh, as we played along. Now, as soon as I landed, uh, made my amphibious landing, the uh, the Iranians massed around me uh, with uh, <laughs> vicious attacks, heavily uh, using uh, ballistic missiles uh, against my HQs, uh, really degrading my forces significantly. And here's a shot of uh, me destroying the airfields and and the uh, port and oil refinery facilities. I uh, used my naval barrage to beat the, the snot out of that hex, uh, try and protect these these units because they had to land here and then attack into Yaski. Yeah, that guy died. Sucks. Uh, so finally, I take. I think is that. Oh, that's right. I landed these forces uh, in forty eight eighteen to kind of screen off uh, to protect uh, protect my primary mission. Uh, to the so I'll show you on this vassal module. Come on, dude. So I landed here to screen off uh, reinforcements coming from this direction, so that I could take Yask in in one uh, in one fell swoop with these units that I landed here. Unfortunately, that's not quite how things worked out. And as you can see, these forces came barreling in from off map, surrounded these guys. These guys pushed in, gave me all sorts of grief. Uh, this whole zone around here is still heavily uh, heavily defended by Iranians. I, I, I'm, I've got my guy, he, he airborne his units into the island down here on the bottom of the screen. If you can see that there. Uh, that was uh, problematic. I didn't think he reinforced it. I thought he'd let it go, but no, he that became uh, a. Uh, we both got uh, over overly focused on that particular island, and you'll you'll see that as we go along. Next air superiority phase. Here we go. Now, uh, now I'm. Uh, this is turn three. Now I'm going to have uh, air supremacy. I believe two, four, six, seven. No, I won't. I will have uh, air superiority. And there's a. Awkward picture of that same stuff. Now, why, you may ask, is there a nuke marker already? Well, the Iranians decided that uh, nuking my forces would be fun. And uh, I had destroyed one of the three nukes they had available with the Special Forces mission and promptly forgot to attempt to eliminate the rest of them. Uh, just because there were so many competing priorities, you can see that I, I could, uh, I should be focused on the patrol tracks. You know, if we look here, right? Oh, I needed to, I needed to take out, and I got to take down the air defense tracks. I've got to take down these patrol boat tracks. You've got to uh, identify and then eliminate all of the, all of the SSM sites. I've got to stop the VPs from accumulating from these locations on the map and all of that requires detection and targeting and air and cruise missiles and ballistic missiles efforts and you just do not have enough resources to go around so the thing that i i failed to do really i think 
is pace myself and let these uh, let these Iranian forces you know, sit where they are or whatever the case may be and use air and cruise missiles to eliminate HQs and destroy physical steps of the enemy forces sort of degrading them all pushing you know weakening all of these because there's quite a few strong divisions in there that can really cause a few problems uh, now while these marines are fairly resilient they're not resilient against nuclear attacks they can hang they can hang with a, a five to one attack against them uh, because of their quality ratings and they'll lose maybe a step uh, and they'll then maybe be forced to retreat but they'll still be able to retreat in good order and fight and live to fight another day and it will take multiple attacks and in fact uh, the iranians attacked uh, on several several multiple occasions against the marines and these other forces landing uh and they they suffered the consequences losing two steps and having to retreat uh, on two different occasions so this nuke attack went in and then uh <clears throat> Actually, you know what? That photograph is, at, I believe, is out of sequence. So my apologies for that. What happens is what's supposed to happen, I think we'll see in the next couple of pictures, is that down here, these forces, aided by stealth bombers, will uh, will capture this city of Jaski here, or Jask, and have a clearing marker put on it, and then the nuke will come in and cause us all sorts of drama. All right. Uh, Another huge battle uh, went on here. The, uh, the Chinese airborne was pretty tough. Uh, my 101st uh, was reinforced by the Gurkhas and uh, two Ra. All got attacked because, hey, you see no HQ there, right? So only local detection is going to apply, which is a miserable die roll to try and get. You've basically got to get a zero or a one. And if it's overcast, which I think this turn was, then it's even worse uh, for us to try and do targeting on the local detection table. And yes, there's the result. <laughs> Not good. We inflicted uh, a step loss on them. They put uh, double strikes down on both those units and it's not going to end well for the 101st. So here we are about to uh, capture the, uh, excuse me, capture uh, the Yask. But We've had to drop emergency supplies for these units down the coastline because they can't, due to this unit here, they can't get uh, they can't get a supply line. So, you know, look at this, just just horrible, just bad. 82nd Airborne's in trouble. The Marines are in trouble. It's on for young and old. I bring in this HQ for the 82nd. Fly some supporting missions. My boys go out of supply. The weather's bad. There's a pizza. <laughs> there's a breakfast, and there's the nu there's the nuke attack that occurred. Uh, everybody loses a step. Everyone also takes a double strike, and you lose uh, lose a bunch on your ER. Uh, it's just miserable. So what do I do? You know, being the calm and clear thinking cold-hearted you know uh, tactical genius that i am i'm like screw you i'm coming too so i'm immediately released to launch nuke uh tactical nukes and we do so we destroy one nuke will uh put a step loss on all of the uh, iranian forces here immediately destroys the vp generating uh, oil facilities but i'm not done i drop a nuke on the uh, iranian forces here I drop another nuke on the HQ over on the right-hand side of the screen there, and then one of these forces in the rough here. Uh, four or five nukes launched, four out of five effective. You have to roll to see if they're a dud. The, the uh, NATO or US forces receive two die rolls to see if that happens. The Iranians receive only one, and they have a very low chance of that nuke going off. Okay, we continued this battle. It went on ad nauseum for uh, control here. Now I'm in a situation where I, I'm struggling with these guys getting out of supply. The ER ratings of seven dropped down. So I was bringing new units in, but then we have issues with bad weather. 
that stop me flying helos. And this just becomes a, a quagmire uh, on a tiny island. And I will eventually either let those units die or move them out. We'll see what happens. I forget. And uh, yes, further further devastation on both sides for both sides there. And here you can see that I've lost all of the units. Uh, well, they're at, that's there. And now, because of these strikes that I laid out with these nukes, it causes supply problems. So all of the, the Iranians on the right hand side of the screen are out of supply. This, this city is nuked, the port's gone, so it's completely useless to me. So now I am literally just screwed. I, I, I've got to get off, uh, off the mainland, but it takes me a while to accept that that is indeed what I need to do. So I decided to bring forces in on, the, uh, on this zone here, around here, to actually here to reinforce these forces and see what we can do to help them out. And I'm going to pause the video here and we'll wrap up the rest of the, the pictures and uh, the commentary and we'll, we'll get caught up and I'll tell you what's going to happen next uh, with this particular game.